I get a lot of questions on the channel and social media about minerals and using minerals during the summer uh, summer months. And I don't use them now. They're not legal here where I hunt. They're not legal in Wisconsin. And a lot of states are not legal. So that's part of it. Somewhere where they're legal, you can have them in the summertime. You can't hunt over them. So there's... Uh, there's different laws. Make sure you check and see if they're legal in your state. But when I was in Michigan, in northern Michigan, I loved using minerals. And, and But you have to look back and step back. Uh, you know, I felt good at first in 98, 99, 2000. Uh, I had a mineral that I used. I think it was Prince Deer Licious, it was called. It was a five-gallon bucket, about 40 pounds of mineral. It's granular. It had only around 30% salt in it, which is important. It had a lot of vitamins and minerals. It was apple scented flavored and it seemed like the deer loved it. I had poured it over certain stumps for years. They became great hot spots for summer trail cam pictures, but they were not hot spots during the fall. So let's look at it for what it is. And along with that, one thing I can mention about minerals is they don't grow a buck to an older age class. I remember mineral supplemental mineral advertisement uh, several years ago and it was on a Michigan channel and I believe they've been on the outdoor channel too but it showed a definite year and a half old buck little six point and then a definite four five six year old monster over here the body weights had to have been even dressed weights were probably a good 80 to 100 pounds plus uh, difference between the two head size everything and they were trying to pass off the year and a half old bucks as this is what our bucks looked like before we added minerals and this is what they looked like after. Pretty easy, right? Folks, that's not the way it works. We'll talk about that at the end. But there are some good strategies when it comes to using minerals. We're gonna go over the top three right here. I have some articles out there about this mineral strategies and um, I think it could be helpful for you. And I hope this makes some sense. But number one, summer trail cam inventory. Obviously, that's a great opportunity to put minerals out in a location where bucks are frequenting during the summer months and then putting a camera on it and getting inventory and a good set of pictures for that. Now, not every property has summer bucks on it. In fact, I discourage bucks from being on your property during the summer because we just don't have most of us. I have 245 acres now here in Minnesota and I don't have enough acres to devote just purely to summer months. I just don't have it. I don't want to waste it when it goes into the fall. So preferably the mature bucks are not here. Now I have some good places next to ag around on the property. There's a lot of edges where I could add some minerals and let those deer feed into those minerals and go out to the ag fields and I could get some pictures of them in those locations. But what it boils down to is if you have bucks in the area, then those summer, and it was interesting, even in the UP of Michigan where I was able to use minerals legally, then, and this is back, you know, many years ago, it was, it was really cool because the bucks, where they were hitting those minerals during the summertime was not where they were at during the fall. So my best fall spots had very infrequent pictures or no pictures at all during the summer months and then vice versa. A lot of those places where I had them in the summer, those deer wouldn't be caught dead there during the fall because it didn't match their cover and food requirements that they need and that they crave during the fall. For mature bucks, I'm talking, they, bucks in general, they need completely different habitats. So if you have those bucks around, great way to get summer inventory. Now I can honestly say, I'm not saying that's a bad idea to do that, but we use mock scrapes and those mock scrapes are put in locations where we expect the bucks to travel when they come through the property. They represent hunting locations and that's often a lot different than where I would put minerals. And so we use those mock scrapes and I believe I can find more bucks with those during the summertime and fall. Overall, a higher percentage of those bucks will hit those mock scrapes and they will, the minerals, that's what I found. So mock scrape might be your answer to taking summer buck inventory, but at the same time for not getting into the woods, entrance exit to food sources, minerals might be your choice and not a bad idea to get a summer buck inventory with minerals even if there might be something a little bit better now number two this is a big one establish patterns of use so i'm looking at i call it a white tail line of movement deer line of movement started writing about that in the mid 2000s and with that was referring to here's bucks bedding here then small bucks immature bucks then does and fawns and then a food source that's a line of movement. A line of movement might be between two bedding areas. It's basically a deer travel route that has a connection of habitat features. That's that line of movement. You're trying to, in many ways, have a deer use that line of movement. For example, that's why I discourage you adding a water hole to most food plots because the deer were already going to the food plot. So you're wasting the opportunity to strengthen the line of movement. You might be strengthening that one spot, but a mineral lick allows you to add 
to that line of movement to strengthen movement. Maybe an entrance exit to a food plot. You put that mineral lick there. It's not in a location where you expect to spook deer or hunt over. It's just an area that you're adding to strengthen the line of movement. Deer are going to that food plot. You want them to enter that food plot in this location because it relates to a, a tree stand in the woods. A line of movement that Think of that mineral lick as just a part of that, along with water holes, mock scrapes, maybe a small hunting plot, the food plot itself, the bedding areas, natural constrictions to lay of the land and travel quarters you've created. There's a lot of different reasons, an apple tree. Those are all line of movement strengtheners, and I hope that makes sense. And then minerals can be a big, a big part of that. Now, number three, something that I believe is a good strategy is you're not adding those minerals to locations where you have water holes, mock scrapes. There is the exception, sometimes a small hunting plot, you want them to pass through in a certain direction. Mineral that can be a part of that. But really, where I'm focusing on a lot of minerals are out in the open where I can monitor, monitor them during the summer without getting back in the woods too much, have a trail camera there, and then that just strengthens that pattern of use for those deer going in and out of the uh, in and out of that food plot, especially a holding plot. Now, I mentioned this with you know scrapes, rubs, whatever you're doing, I'd rather separate those features out. So I'd rather have five or six attractions along a 600 yard line of movement instead of a couple and concentrated areas of attraction because when you have those staggered throughout, there's a reason for those deer to keep moving and to strengthen that line that you're trying to create. And then that line, of course, relates to several tree stand locations. So if the whole line is strong, then your morning stands back by bedding areas are strong, your evening food source stands are strong, your midday cruising stands are are strong that are in between. One thing, and I and I know that I don't believe that there's any scientific study for this, but the thought is if you have a lot of salt at a mineral station and it's next to water, deer will consume the mineral. There's a lot of salt, they get thirsty, they drink more water, they feel bloated, and they eat less food because of that. There's no scientific study, but it makes a lot of sense. I won't even mention the person that, that brought that up to me, but it was back in my mineral um, adding days in Michigan and that person has more experience with deer and deer science than I ever will but they mentioned that to me that this is a you know kind of a it could be a concern if you're putting minerals right next to water the two don't necessarily go right together but regardless I don't like adding those combinations of attractions together with the exception of maybe a small hunting plot water hole on that small hunting plot when I don't have room to put it somewhere else so those are three you know summer trail cam inventory, you're establishing patterns of use within a deer line of movement, and then of course making sure that it's separated out so you can strengthen that line of movement with multiple attractions spaced out over a long period as opposed to concentrating in one spot no different than a food plot in a, in a water hole, mock scrape, in those additions. Number one though, these are good reasons to add minerals right here. The bad reason is, is if you think you're going to grow bigger antlers with minerals, if you're going to put more body weight on, if you're gonna increase fawn recruitment with minerals, you're probably sorely mistaken. That's misguided. That's a lot of the marketing and hunting hype that goes along with minerals. It's just a play, and, and that was just, just terrible, that comparison in the past, where this is a definite year and a half old, this is a definite older buck, mature buck, and trying to say that this mineral product, and that's the disingenuous portion of the hunting industry that I don't appreciate myself, because I don't recommend products unless I actually believe in them, and I'm not gonna make myself look like a fool and say, this year and a half old buck was the same as this five-year-old buck, the only difference was they're both five, or they're both three, whatever you wanna say, but one had minerals, one did not. There's a lot of good studies out there. One of them I believe is in Mississippi, I could be wrong, it's a southerly state, could have been Louisiana. They're looking at a thousand acres, and in that thousand acres, they're looking at similar habitats, 1,000 acre parcel, located near another thousand acre parcel, similar habitat, similar soil, certainly the same climate, region, growing growing season, and, and they measure things like body weight. They measure fawn recruitment. They bet they measure antler size, overall antler inches, beam diameter, base diameter, things like that. So where you could look at these measurables in several er several areas and they found no difference between deer that were on minerals and deer that weren't. 
It's a big difference from some of the feeding programs I see, summer feeding programs. A lot of the deer ranches that are fenced in, when they feed all summer long and during the growing season, they're feeding a portion of minerals into that feed. So the deer are actually ingesting that as part of their food. They're not just licking a block. They're actually eating it on a daily basis over and over again, pumping them full of minerals. But even then, you're looking at that last 5% or few percentage points of antler growth so that it gets them from that one class of a 195 inch deer to a 200 inch deer or 165 to a 170 or whatever it might be you're getting those last few inches in there so they can also be be paid more but you're not taking a buck that would have been 135 and making them 180 because you had minerals typically it's all about the food the genetics the soil but most importantly the age and if you're trying to grow older bucks with minerals and get them from a year and a half to four and a half in appearance in size of antler and body weight folks it's not going to happen really if you're looking at it because you think you're improving the health of the herd i would say that's more a misguided thought and i know there's going to be people that are bash me that believe in minerals i find some of the most ardent supporters of minerals are those that are sponsored by mineral companies or own the mineral companies themselves and i'm not saying they're not a good thing for a lot of these things right here for minerals but let's use them for what they are enjoy them and I believe that you focus on the true and good strategies and minerals, then you'll be guided in the right direction, pointed in the right direction for not only getting some great trail cameras during the summer, but establishing those patterns of use and offering those attractions in front of your tree stands or by your tree stands that further cement that deer movement that you're trying to capitalize on this fall. I'm excited to tell you guys about my latest web class. It's how to plant food plots, how to design your food plot program. And it covers everything. And really there's 30 videos, over 10 hours, 11 hours of footage, workbook, hats, you know, all that stuff on top of it. I urge you to check out the link, but I cover five main areas, critical food plot concepts, where to plant, how to create, what to plant, and finally how to plant it takes you through that step by step so you can make your own decisions that apply to you and build a great high quality food plot program this year, whether you have decades of experience or no experience at all.